Hi and welcome back. Can you please pause the video and attempt these 12 questions and I'll go through each of these questions. Hi, so the first question is that we need to find the length of A. To do this, we're going to be using the cosine rule. To apply the cosine rule, we need to have two sides. So in this case, we have 5 centimeters and 12 centimeters, and we also need to have an angle. And in this case, again, the angle is 77 degrees. Therefore, we're going to be using this equation. So it's A squared is equal to B squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos theta okay so a is always opposite the angle given to us now i'm going to label this side b and this side c it's going to substitute all the information given to us into the equation so we have a squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared minus 2 times 5 times 12 cos 77 degrees. Now I'm just going to simplify it further. So we have a squared is equal to 25 plus 144 minus 120 cos 77 degrees 25 plus 144 is equal to 169 so we have a squared is equal to 169 minus 120 times cos 77 which equals to 26.9941265 Now 169 minus 26.9941265 is equal to so we have a squared which equals to 142.00587.35 Now to find the value of A, we need to square root both sides. So A is equal to the square root of 142.005 a seven three five therefore a is equal to eleven point nine one six six two one seven three gonna round it up to one decimal place so therefore a is equal to eleven point nine one dp Question two, make x the subject. 8y plus 7x over xy equals seven. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna multiply both sides by xy. This will help me to eliminate the denominator xy. So I'm gonna multiply this side by xy and this side by xy. So what we should have now is 8y plus 7x equals 7 open bracket x y close bracket I'm then going to expand the brackets so again we should have 8y plus 7x equals 7x y I'm then going to subtract 7x from both sides we have 8y equals 7x y minus 7x I'm then going to factorize the common variable which is x so 8y equals open bracket 7y minus 7 close brackets x I'm then going to divide both sides by 7y minus 7 
So what we should have now is 8y over 7y minus 7 equals x. I'm then going to rearrange the equation so I can have the x variable on the left hand side. So x is equal to 8y over 7y minus 7 and that's our final answer. Question 3. Write the equation of the line in the form y equals mx plus c which passes through 1, 1 and 0, minus 4. So let me just write the points over here. We have 1, 1 and 0, minus 4. What I'm going to do next, I'm going to label each of these coordinates x1, y1, x2, y2. So this is x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. Now to calculate the gradient, I'm going to be using this particular equation. So the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'm then going to substitute in these values into this equation to work out the gradient. So y2 is minus 4, so we have minus 4 minus y1, which is 1, over x2. x2 was 0, so we have 0 minus x1. x1 was 1. So again, I'm just going to simplify it. Minus 4 minus 1, which is minus 5. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Minus 5 divided by minus 1 is 5. So the gradient is 5. And it can be written as y equals 5x plus c. Now to find the value of c, I'm going to be using the coordinates 0 and minus 4. So 0 and minus 4. 0 is the x, minus 4 is the y. I'm going to substitute into this equation. So we have y equals 5x plus c. y is equal to minus 4. So we have minus 4 equals 5 times x. x is being 0 plus c. 5 times 0 is 0. So minus 4 is equal to c. Therefore, the line of the equation is y equals 5x minus 4, and that's your answer. Question 4. Find the turning point of y equals x squared plus 4x plus 2. So the first thing I'm going to do is to equate the quadratic equation to 0. So we have x squared plus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. I'm then going to subtract 2 from both sides, so we should have minus 2 over here, minus 2, x squared plus 4x plus underline equals minus 2 plus underline. To find the underlying number, we're going to take the b coefficient divided by 2 and square it. So the b coefficient in this case is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Therefore, the underlying number is 4. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals minus 2 plus 4. I'm going to simplify it further. So x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 2. Now, x squared plus 4x plus 4 forms a perfect square. Therefore, it can be rewritten as, open brackets, x plus 2, close brackets, raise the power of 2, equals 2. I'm now going to subtract 2 from both sides. Therefore, we should have x plus 2, close brackets, minus 2, equals 0. Therefore, the turning point is minus 2 minus 2 and that's our final answer. Question 5. 
Factorise the following quadratic equation, 5x squared minus 22x plus 21. To answer this question, we're going to be using the quadratic formula. So it states x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Our next step is to identify the terms a, b and c. So a is 5, b is minus 22, c is 21. I'm then going to substitute these values into this equation. So we should have x is equal to minus open brackets minus 22 close brackets plus or minus the square root of minus 22 squared minus 4 open brackets 5 close brackets open brackets 21 close brackets over 2 open brackets 5 close brackets going to simplify it further so x is equal to 22 plus or minus the square root of 22 squared is 484 minus 5 times 4 times 21 which is 420 over 10 again x is equal to 22 plus or minus the square root of 64 over 10. Simplify it further. x is equal to 22 plus or minus 8 over 10. Now to find the first value of x, we're going to be doing 22 plus 8, which is 30, divided by 10, which is 3. So our first value of x is 3. A second value of x can be found by 22 minus 8, which is 14. 14 divided by 10 is 1.4, so or 1.4, and that's our answer. Question 6, find the values of y and x. So the first thing we need to do when we need to calculate the angle of a non-right angle triangle is to label the sides a, b and c. Side A can be found as is always opposite the angle that we need to calculate. The other two sides can either be B or C, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm going to label it. So I want to find this particular angle. Therefore, this side is A, and this side's B, and this side's C. So the cosine equation is A squared equals B squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos theta. Now I'm going to substitute the values of a, b and c into the equation. So a is equal to 8.3 squared equals 6.6 .6 squared plus 7.5 squared minus 2 times 6.6 .6 times 7.5 cos theta. 8.3 squared is equal to 68.89. 6.6 squared is equal to 43.5. 6 plus 7.5 squared is 56.25 minus 2 times 6.6 .6 times 7.5 which is 99 cos theta. I'm going to simplify it further. So we have 68.89 equals 99.81 minus 
99 cos theta. I'm going to subtract 99.81 from both sides. Therefore, what we're left with is minus 30.92 equals minus 99 cos theta. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative 99. So what we're left with is 700 and 75 over 2475 equals cos theta. Now I'm going to take the inverse of cos to find out the value of theta. So theta is equal to inverse of cos. So cos raised to the power of 1. Sorry, cos raised to the power of negative 1. 775 over 2475. Therefore, the value of theta is equal to 71.8007483. Going to round it to 1 dp. Theta is equal to 71.8, 1 dp. Now I'm going to be using the sine rule to work out the angle of y. So the sine rule states, sine a over a is equal to sine b over B. Now the angle of A is 71.8 and I'm going to substitute into this equation and the length of A is equal to 8.3. So what we should have is sine 71.8 over 8.3 equals sine B. So this is the angle that we want to find out over side B which is 7.5. So what we need to do next is to use our calculator and type sine 71.8 divided by 8.3. Then we're going to multiply both sides by 7.5. So what we should have is sine B is equal to 0.8 Five, eight, four, zero, oh, eight, four, eight, zero, oh, three. Again, to find b, we're going to do the inverse function of sine. So b is equal to sine raised to the power of negative one. Open bracket zero point eight five eight four zero oh, eight four. A O three. Therefore, B should be equal to fifty nine point one three eight three five four O five. Go round it to one decimal place, so it's fifty nine point one one D P, and that's our final answer. Question 7. Expand the following bracket. Open bracket 5x plus 3, close bracket, raise to the power of 2, open bracket, x minus 3, close bracket. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to rewrite the question as open bracket 5x plus 3, close bracket, open bracket 5x plus 3, close bracket, open bracket, x minus 3, close bracket. I'm then going to expand the first two brackets. So we have 5x times 5x, which is 25x squared. 5x times 3, which is 15x. 
3 times 5 is 15x. 3 times 3, which is 9. I'm going to simplify it further by collecting like-for-like -like terms. So we have 25x squared. 15x plus 15x gives us 30x plus 9. I'm then going to expand 25x squared plus 30x plus 9 with x minus 3. So let me put that in brackets. x minus 3. I'm now going to expand both the brackets. 25x squared times by x, which is 25x cubed. 25x squared times by negative 3 is minus 75x squared. 30x times by x is positive 30x squared. 30x times negative 3 is minus 90x. 9 times x, which is 9x. 9 times negative 3 is minus 27. I'm now going to simplify it by collecting like-for-like -like terms. We have 25x cubed, so 25x cubed goes over here. Minus 75x squared plus 30x squared gives us minus 45x squared. Minus 90x plus 9x gives us minus 81x. And finally, minus 27 goes over here. So that's your final answer. Question 8. Simplify 4x squared plus 27x plus 18 over 4x squared plus 25x minus 56 times open brackets x plus 8 close brackets over open brackets x plus 6 close brackets. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is to factorise the numerator of the fraction on the left hand side. That is 4x squared plus 27x plus 18. So let me just write that down over here. To factorise this quadratic, we're going to be taking the a coefficient, in this case 4, and multiply it by 18. So 4 times 18 is 72. Now we need to find two numbers that when you multiply together gives us 72, but also adds up to 27, which is the b coefficient. Well, it is 24 and 3. So 24 times 3 gives us 72, 24 plus 3 gives us 27. So this is the way I like to factorize a quadratic where the a coefficient is greater than 1. So I'm going to put my brackets in. I'm going to put 4x over here and 4x over here. I'm then going to deal with the signs. Positive, positive. I'm then going to put 3 over here and 24 over here. I'm then going to simplify this bracket by dividing everything inside it by 4. So what we should have now is 4x plus 3 close brackets open brackets x plus 6. Now I'm going to be factorizing the denominator of the fraction on the left hand side. That is 4x squared plus 25x minus 56. To do this, I'm going to be multiplying the a coefficient, in this case 4, by the c coefficient, which is 56. So let me just write it down. So we have 4x squared plus 25x minus 56. I'm going to multiply the a coefficient with the c coefficient. So in this case, it'll be 4 times negative 56 which equals to minus 224. Now I need to find two numbers that you multiply together that gives us negative 224, but also adds up to the b coefficient, 25. Well, it's minus 7 and 32. So minus 7 times 32 gives us negative 224. Minus 7 plus 32 gives us positive 25. So let me just scroll down and factorize this further. So put your brackets in. So we have open brackets, close brackets, open brackets, close brackets. Put 
4x over here, 4x over here. I'm then going to put minus 7 over here, plus 32 over here. Again, I'm going to be simplifying the second bracket by dividing all the terms by 4. So what we should have now, open 4x minus 7, close bracket, open bracket x plus 8, close bracket. Now I'm going to put it all together. So the numerator, when we simplified it, we had 4x plus 3, close bracket, open bracket, x plus 6, close bracket, which was over open bracket 4x minus 7, close bracket, open bracket, x plus 8, close bracket. And on this side, it was multiplied by x plus 8, close bracket, over open bracket, x plus 6. Now when you multiply fractions, all you're doing is multiplying across. So essentially what we have is open bracket 4x plus 3, close bracket, open bracket, x plus 6, close bracket, open bracket, x plus 8, close bracket, over, open bracket 4x minus 7, close bracket, open bracket, x plus 8, close bracket, open bracket, x, plus 6, close bracket. Now I can simplify further by cancelling out the x plus 6 from the numerator and denominator, and also cancelling out x plus 8 from the numerator and the denominator. So what we're left with is 4x plus 3 over 4x minus 7 and that's our final answer. Question 9. Find the area of this triangle. So the first thing we need to do is to identify the angle that we want to calculate. So I want to calculate this particular angle. I'm going to label x. Our next step is to label the sides of this non-right angle triangle A, B and C. Side A can be identified as is always opposite the angle that we want to calculate. So therefore 12 centimeters is equal to A. B is 7 centimeters and C is 8 centimeters. Doesn't really matter which way B and C go. Okay, so it's important that you recognize that A is always opposite the angle that we want to calculate. To find the value of X, I'm going to be using the cosine rule. The cosine rule is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos theta. Now I'm going to substitute the values of a, b and c into this equation. So we have a which is 12 squared, b is 7 squared, c is 8 squared, minus 2 times 7 times 8 times cos theta. 12 squared is 144, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 2 times 7 times 8 is minus 112, cos theta. I'm going to simplify it further by adding 49 to 64, which is 113. minus 112 cos theta. I'm then going to subtract both sides by 113. So minus 113 minus 113. So what we should have now is 31 equals negative 112 cos theta. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative 112. So what we should have now, is divide this side by negative 112 and this side by negative 112. 
So what we should have is minus 31 over 112 equals cos theta. Now to find the value of theta, we're going to take the inverse of cos, which is cos raised to the power of minus 1. So we have theta is equal to cos raised to the power of negative 1, open bracket, minus 31 over 112, close bracket. Therefore, theta is equal to 106.068495. Going to round this up to one decimal place. So theta is equal to 106.1 dp. To find the area of this non-right angle triangle, we're going to be using this general equation. So area is equal to a half times A times B times sine theta. Now we know what the value of A, B and theta is. So all I'm going to do is just substitute into this equation to work out the area. So a half times 7 times A times sine 100 and 6.1 close bracket therefore the area is equal to 26.9018 going to round this up to one decimal place so 26.9 open brackets 1 dp question 10 find the values of x and y x squared plus y squared equals 5 y minus x equals 1. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to label the top equation equation number 1 and the bottom equation equation number 2. So equation number 1 and equation number 2. For equation number 2, I'm going to be rearranging the equation to make y the subject. Therefore, I'm going to be adding x to both sides. So equation number 2 is y minus x equals 1 going to be adding x to both sides so minus x plus x cancels out whatever you do to one side you must do to the other side so we're going to add x so therefore y is equal to 1 plus x I'm then going to substitute equation number 2 into equation number 1 so we should have x squared plus 1 plus x close brackets raised to the power 2 equals Five. This can be rewritten as x squared plus open brackets 1 plus x close brackets open brackets 1 plus x close brackets equals 5. I'm then going to expand the brackets and simplify it by collecting like for like terms. So 1 times 1 is 1 so x squared plus 1. 1 times x, which is 1x, x times 1 is 1x, x times x, which is x squared, equals 5. I'm going to simplify it further, so we've got x squared plus x squared, which is 2x squared. We have 2x over here, so 2x, and we have plus 1 equals 5. I'm then going to equate the equation to 0 by subtracting 5 from both sides. So minus 5. Whatever you do to one side you must do to the other side. So we should have 2x squared plus 2x minus 4 equals 0. I'm then going to simplify it further by dividing each of the terms by 2. So 2x squared divided by 2 is x squared. 2x divided by 2 is x. Minus 4 divided by 2 is minus 2 equals 0. I'm then going to factorize it. Open brackets. x x plus or minus 2 and 1. Therefore the values of x are equal to minus 2 or 1.
Now to find the values of y, what we need to do is substitute the values of x into equation number 2. So let x equals 1. So we have y minus 1 equals 1. Right? I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Therefore, when y, therefore when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2. So our coordinates are 1 and 2. And we're going to do the same to the other value of x. So let x equals minus 2, substitute into equation number 2. So we have y minus, open brackets, minus 2, close brackets, equals 1. So negative and negative gives us positive, so y plus 2 equals 1. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, so it'll cancel out. So positive 2 minus 2 is 0. So what we're left with is y is equal to negative 1. So when x is minus 2, y is minus 1. And that is our final answer. Question 11. Simplify 2 over 3x plus 2 plus 3 over 2x plus 1. Our first step is to find a common denominator. To do that, I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by 2x plus 1 and the right-hand side by 3x plus 2. So let me just write the question out over here. 2 over 3x plus 2 plus 3 over 2x plus 1. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 2x plus 1. And on the right hand side, I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 3x plus 2. I'm then going to expand the brackets. So 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times 1, which is 2. Over 3x times 2x, which is 6x squared. 3x times 1, which is 3x. 2 times 2x, which is 4x. And 2 times 1, which is 2. Plus 3 times 3x, which is 9x. 3 times 2, which is 6. Over 2x times 3x, which is 6x squared. 2x times 2, which is 4x. 1 times 3x, which is 3x. 1 times 2, which is 2. I'm then going to simplify this further. So what we should have is 4x plus 9x, which is 13x. 2 plus 6, which is 8. Over... 6x squared plus 7x plus 2. And that's our final answer. Question 12. Solve 5 over 4x minus 3 plus 3 over 4x minus 7 equals 4. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write the question out over here. So we have 5 over 4x minus 3 plus 3 over 4x minus 7 equals 4. So my first step is to write the question out over here. So we have 5 over 4x minus 3 plus 3 over 4x minus 7 equals 4. Now what we need to do next is to find a common denominator by multiplying the left hand side, which is the numerator and the denominator, by 4x minus 7. So left hand side multiplied by 4x minus 7 and then the denominator 4x minus 7. 
I'm now then going to multiply the right hand side, the numerator and denominator by 4x minus 3. So multiplied 4x minus 3, close bracket, 4x minus 3, close bracket. I'm now going to simplify by expanding the brackets and collecting like for like terms. So we have 4x times 5, which is 20x. Minus 7 times 5, which is minus 35. 3 times 4x, which is 12x. 3 times negative 3, which is minus 9. Over 4x times 4x, which is 16x squared. 4x times negative 3, which is minus 12x. Minus 7 times 4x, which is minus 28x. Minus 7 times minus 3 is positive 21, which equals 4. Again, I'm going to simplify this equation by collecting like-for-like -like terms. So we should have 32x minus 44 over 16x squared minus 40x plus 21 equals 4. I'm then going to multiply both sides by 16x squared minus 40x plus 21. So we should have 32x minus 44 equals 4, open brackets, 16x squared minus 40x plus 21, close bracket. I'm then going to expand the brackets. So 32x minus 44. 4 times 16x squared is 64x squared minus 4 times 40x which is 160x 4 times 21 which is 84 I'm then going to equate the equation to 0 to do this I'm going to add 44 to both sides so minus 44 plus 44 cancels out. So I'm going to add 44 to this equator side. So what we should have is 32x is equal to 64x squared minus 160x plus 128. I'm then going to subtract 32x from both sides. So minus 32x and minus 32x. So what we should have now is 0, 64x squared minus 192x plus 128. I'm then going to divide each of the terms by 64. So 64 divided by 64 is 1x. So we have x squared. Minus 192x divided by 64 is minus 3x. And 128 divided by 64 is positive 2. I'm then going to factorise x squared minus 3x plus 2. So what we should have, to put this in brackets, is x, x minus, minus. So we should have 2 and 1. Therefore, the values of x are 2 or 1. That's the final answer.